Since June 5, 2014, more than 2,800 sites across 39 states have recorded a positive test for the porcine epidemic diarrhea virus. Nearly 1,200 of those are in Iowa, far and away more than any other state. 70 of the premises are in Nebraska. It's important to point out that PEDV was first confirmed in the spring of 2013, and preliminary reports show October has only one confirmed case. That was in Wisconsin. Earlier this week, we talked with Nebraska Extension Swine Specialist Benny Moat to find out what the industry has learned about biosecurity from the virus. The first thing we learn is we're not as clean as we thought we were. Uh, there are several ways that uh, microorganisms or viruses were traveling across and into our barns that uh, PED made us think twice about. Uh, feed was definitely one of the first ones. Uh, with some of the ingredients in feed being sourced uh, from different animal byproducts really make us think about the whole processing that they have. And then the other big one is transportation, both of the livestock and the feed and the vehicles themselves. So learning from that, is there anything people can do on their operations, those simple fixes or the necessary fixes they can make to help better prepare themselves or better defend their operations? First and foremost, uh, having clean vehicles is the number one thing they can do, uh, especially your transportation vehicles, make sure they're clean. Uh, make sure you know where those the trucks are coming from. If they're coming off site, make sure that they are cleaned, uh, especially between farms, disinfectant baths, uh, spraying down tires as they're pulling into the yard. Those are all some of the basics that everybody, regardless of the size of the operation, can do. Uh, as you get a little bigger and get a little more complicated, Having uh, the trucks uh, go through the washing and baking bays is always good, but first and foremost, just, just make sure the vehicles are clean when they come onto your farm. You're doing some discussions around the state and around the topic of biosecurity and the veterinary feed directive. One of the aspects is how can biosecurity help reduce antibiotic use? What does that mean? Well, that, that's kind of a broad topic, but you know, if we start off with healthier animals, uh, then we won't need to reach for those antibiotics to keep them healthy. And so if we can start high health, stay high health, uh, then we won't have to go to those because nobody wants to use antibiotics in the feed. Uh, contrary to what some people think, we don't reach for them first. It's something we add to them and there is a cost to that. And that's something I would like the public to know is when we do that, we're paying for the cost to make sure we keep our animals healthy. So is it realistic to say that the industry can reduce some of the use of antibiotics while maintaining animal welfare? I believe so. There's going to be a learning curve. Uh, there are things that we were used to using uh, that's uh, going to take a little bit more time for us to figure out. We still have access to those, uh, but we're going to have to go through the vets more uh, to get those. I think some of the smaller producers are going to have a little harder time uh, than maybe the big ones will because they, the big companies usually have their vets on staff. So the people are going to get to know our veterinarians very well. Yeah, those smaller operations, what are some of the instances where you see that they might need the approval of a veterinarian now that whether or not they see that coming is going to happen. I actually see that uh, for any time they're going to mix feed where before they used to be able to get some of their feed grade uh, medications like CTC uh, over the counter and that's one of the ones that people will reach for first to go into the nursery feed. Uh, that's one where if they're going to continue to use that they're going to have to go through a vet to get that. How prepared do you think the industry is for the veterinary feed directive? Uh, moderate, and which scares me a little bit because that deadline's coming up here very fast. Uh, there's some, and one of the areas I think it hurts us a little bit is going to be on the, well, the, the extreme smaller producers that do mix feed. And then actually the 4-H and FFA kids with some of their show pig, so they just aren't aware of that. We're starting to get the word out, we just aren't doing a very good job of that yet. You can find more information about the Veterinary Feed Directive, including our previous interviews, through the Market Journal website.